Welcome to another episode of Ingrid's World. What gets me excited? Well, it's art, great food, uh, knowledge of wine. Our entire list of guests fit this bill of the spice of life. Now we're going to meet Isis Wallace, our youth correspondent. She will be talking about summer fun, ah, and then listen to Gray Mosley talk about wine and learn a few things with me. And then we will be in the kitchen with proprietor Michael Kearney and Chef John Conway from the Old Brogue. Ah, the spice of life. That's what it's all about in Ingrid's world. Now let's welcome to the show Isis Wallace. Hi, Isis. How are you doing? Good. So, summer fun. This is summertime. And what do you have planned for this summer? I'm going to be going to Florida to Disney World. <gasps> Disney World. Take me, take me. <laughs> <laughs> and so, what do you love about Florida? Um, I like to go the... I like to go swimming, and I like to um, go around Disney and ride all the rides. Oh, my goodness. And when you get out of school, do you go straight to Florida? No. I stay at home for a little bit, and I go to vacation Bible school. Oh, very nice. So when, you do, when summer comes around, what's your most favorite thing to do? Hmm. My favorite thing to do is go to the pool. Swimming. Are you a swimmer? I'm going to learn how to swim this year. Excellent. And so I want to know how, I mean, you're like, you're like really smart. What grade are you in now? Fourth. Fourth grade. And I hear that uh, you received like quite a few awards. Yes. Mm. Are you on like a special, like your gifted program? Yes. You're in gifted. So I bet you, do you study during the uh, summertime too? Sometimes I do so I can get a head start on math and reading in school. Okay, so for those that are out there, please tell them what they should be doing so they can be just like ISIS. They, you should study um, over the summer so you can get a head start on school so you won't be confused. Mm. And what should they be studying? Mm, you... Mostly math and reading because those are the most hard subjects. Okay, math and reading, all right? And because those are the really hard subjects. Mm -hmm. oh, I totally understand that. Any other things that they should be doing? Do you do workbooks? Mm, only sometimes, but one of the biggest things they should do is have fun. <gasps> All right, so everyone should hear this. Isa said, have fun, <laughs> but also do a little bit of studying so you won't be far behind at all. In fact, you'll be ahead of the class. Yes, I'm already ahead of the class in social studies. <laughs> I am not surprised. I know that you're ahead of everybody. <laughs> Isis, it's always a pleasure to welcome you on the show. Thanks again for giving us good tips for our youth that are watching. You're welcome. Coming up next, we will welcome to the show Gray Mosby. Let's welcome to the show Gray Mosby. Thank you for being on the show, Gray. It's my pleasure. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. So you're going to teach me a little bit about wine and wine selections and how do I keep them up? Well, first of all, what's the scoop of wine? Well, I think wine is something that some people are into, generally the same people that are into great food, um, because wine is usually best when it's with uh, a meal, in my mm. opinion, anyway. So. Um, that's the big scoop is you know if you're into flavors and tastes and you know art for the palate wine is where it's at i love it art for the palate because this whole show is focused on the spice of life and so art for the palate all right so what are the choices that are out there well um i think it generally breaks down between uh, people that like their wine a little bit more bold and usually with a little bit more sweeter and riper flavors and people that like like their wine a little more subtle uh, and a little more, um, I don't know, shall we say, uh, s yeah, subtle and intricate flavors. Um, 
So that's the big divide. I think people, uh, people either like a big, bold style or they like a wine with a lot of complexity. Mm, I see. So um, how do you kind of like figure out, um, you know, I always hear that people have like these cellars where they keep their wine and everything has to be chilled to perfection and <laughs> then <laughs> you laugh. But what's that about? Well, I think there's a lot of, there's a lot more hype about that kind of stuff than there really needs to be. Okay. Um, wine is, I think, best, you know, when you like it. And you is every one of us. So it's a, it's a question of how much time and effort uh, you want to put into it. If you're happy to just grab something off the grocery store shelf, pop the cork and have it with, you know, whatever you're having for dinner, that's one person. Another person may want to take the time to have it be just the right temperature and, and have been stored for a number of years. And, and those people are probably the, more, uh, the people that would be more interested in having a cellar. Ah, I see. So now a cellar, does a cellar mean that it's, let's say, like I have this million dollar home and everyone gets to come downstairs in my cellar or can I have one in my kitchen? Um, well, the kitchen's not always the best place because of the change in temperature ah. and vibration. A lot of times, um, you know, if your, your kitchen is not in the basement and it's on a, you know, wooden subfloor that vibrates when people walk through their room. So cellars are really better um, on lower levels, especially, um, you know, those million dollar homes where you want to have a showcase for a wine cellar. That's certainly, um, it's becoming more and more common. Really? But you can also get uh, a really nice cellar just by converting an existing closet in your main main uh, floor too. You could do that. So it doesn't have to be the million dollar home. I, I had a wine cellar in a, a townhouse in Sherlington and it was uh, it was great. I love it. In, in Sherlington. I love it. So you can do it upscale or you can do use what you have right now and make it happen. What about stocking the wine cellar? Now, how do you do that? How do you figure it out? Well, the, the first thing you need to ask yourself is, uh, am I building a cellar uh, because I need a place to keep all the wine that I, I compulsively buy? <laughs> uh, or do you need a wine cellar because you're trying to keep things for a long, long time and have them age perfectly? I think you could get some nice racks and, and put them in a in an area that doesn't have a lot of vibration or a lot of light and doesn't have too much temperature change like against the wall of a, of a basement. Um, and that would be fine for someone who just wants to drink, have a place to store the wine that they drink. Uh, but if you are looking for a place that uh, you can put fine wines like uh, Bordeaux or Burgundies or maybe California Cabernet Sauvignon, something like that, Barolo, Brunello, um, mm. and let it age and um, you know, then you might want to take the time to make sure that you've actually created a cellar that controls the temperature and the humidity as well. And um, ah. that's really the, the key for long-term aging. Oh, so you, so you control that. And, I, and I'm picking up a couple of things. You don't want it to move around and... The, yeah, exactly. Um, you know, you don't want it exposed to sunlight for one thing for sure. Uh -huh. um, vibration, especially with uh, sparkling wine, is bad because it's sort of it, uh, sparkling wine is a little more delicate. And uh, for instance, some people will uh, get a bottle of champagne for the holidays and leave it in their refrigerator for several months and be surprised when it doesn't taste good oh, when they finally neat. take it out. <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, it's because the refrigerator vibrates and it slowly shakes the wine apart. So. Oh, because I'm going like, well, what's going on here? <laughs> and it loses its sparkle and whatnot. So there's a reason why you should, so what should you do in that case in terms of storing it? Um, you wanna make sure that the wine is stored on its side so that the cork stays wet. Um, so it, it continues to expand, the cork dries out, it becomes porous and it allows oxygen transfer at a too high a rate. So you should store the wine you know, on its side and then um, oh. as I say, someplace with a constant temperature uh, for, for long-term aging, 55 degrees is the optimal temperature and someplace with um, about 75% humidity would be great as well. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you just want to store wine for a couple of years, something that doesn't change temperature too much and right. doesn't vibrate, no sunlight would be fine. And no sunlight, okay. 
So you can, now I know that, and I never knew that you had a store of wine on the side. So, mm -hmm. so if you have wine in your refrigerator and the door of the refrigerator, that's not necessarily the best place. For a week or two, it's fine. But beyond that, yeah. Beyond that, it's not the storage place. So a final word about uh, selecting wines. Mm -hmm. what, what's your final word about that? Well, I would say find a local wine shop that has uh, someone uh, whose taste you trust and uh, go to that person and, and let them help you uh, find the wines you're looking for. It's too hard to pick a wine off the grocery store shelf uh, these days. Um, all the labels look good and, and it's, not really, uh, it's not really easy to get a great bottle of wine unless the person that is helping you find it has actually had it. Great, thank you so much for coming on the show. You certainly have taught me a lot about wine. Coming up next, I want you to meet Mike Kearney and Chef John Conway from the Old Brogue. Stay tuned. Now let's welcome to the show Mike Kearney and Chef John. Hey, what's cooking from the Old Brogue? Thank you, Ingrid. Thank you for having us. Uh, this evening we're going to prepare a blackened salmon salad mm. over a bed of uh, baby field greens with mandarin oranges, Ooh. gorgonzola cheese, dried cherries, and cherry tomatoes with a ginger soy vinaigrette. Oh my goodness. And we're also going to do a uh, beef bourguignon box tea, which is a braised beef tenderloin oh with my. pearl onions and mushrooms. Yummy. In a burgundy wine sauce in a, served in a potato pancake. I think I've died and gone to heaven. <laughs> so, well, first of all, while you're preparing that, okay. let me ask you a little bit about the old bro. Like, how did you get started in restaurant business? Well, my uh, grandfather started in uh, Belfast, and uh, he owned the Dairy Hotel in Belfast, and he owned the Dairy Steakhouse, and he, he opened the first Chinese restaurant in, uh, in uh, Belfast. And he's been in the hospitality business until he passed away in the mid 80s. Wow. And uh, my father and I opened the old brogue with uh, my brother Patrick in uh, 1981, St. Patrick's Day, 1981. Wonderful. And that uh, was a good day to start the celebration. And we've been there ever since. So we've been there 33 years now. And uh, congratulations. Well, thank you. That's no small feat here in Fairfax. That's fantastic. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. as you see here today by our chef John, John's been with us 12 years now, mm. and uh, the old brogue is really known for its food. We're not your typical Irish pub, which, you know, is always good and entertaining. The food yeah. is, fair, is, is pub fair, but we really do an excellent job with the food. Um, some of these oh. specialties he's actually preparing today are some of the pub favorites. Uh, the blackened salmon salad is our number one uh, salad dish. We actually uh, had a request to come out today with our fish and chips, which is our number mm -hmm. one item. Mm -hmm. uh, we hand cut over 200 pounds of fresh cod a week for our fish and chips alone. 200 pounds? 200 pounds, yes ma'am. Oh my word. So uh, we're very busy and it's a nice place to stop in at, in Great Falls. Oh my goodness. Now, um, tell us a little bit about yourself, Chef John. Ingrid, I moved to the United States in 1996, 18 years ago. Um, I lived in New York for six years, and then I decided to move to Northern Virginia, Great, uh, Great Falls. Oh my and goodness. And that's where I met Mike, and I became the chef. And you were coming from where? From Ireland. From Ireland. 40 miles south of Dublin. Oh my goodness. Yes, born and raised. Born and raised in yes. Ireland. Yeah. And so we really just, so we really are having authentic Irish food. Yes, our beef burgundy on box tea will be very authentic Irish mm, food. Yummy. Yes. So and also we have our Irish whiskey cake, <laughs> which we'll be serving later cake. as well. I love it. So back with, you know, preparing the foods, I mean, you serve 200 pounds. How much salmon do you serve? Mm, usually uh, about 16 sides a week. So John, that's how many pounds is that approximately? Yeah, 16, 16 sides of salmon per week. Oh my goodness. And that's for our blackened salmon salad and also our uh, pumpkin crusted seeded salmon mm. over a bed of sauteed spinach oh my goodness. with an orange rosemary butter. Now that all sounds like it fits in my diet. Yeah. <laughs> well, salmon's good yeah. for you. Am I, I, and I love it. It's very healthy for you, yep. Mm -hmm. and I mean, it's, it, mm -hmm. the, the nice thing about the salad that John's preparing, it has uh, a lot of different textures mm. that'll be pleasing to the palate. You know, mm. with the, uh, 
micro salad greens, and then the sweet mandarin oranges. Mm -hmm. The gorgonzola cheese brings in a tartness. And then we add the cherry tomatoes. Yummy. And then, uh, and then also the fresh dried cherries. And then uh, finish it off with John's uh, balsamic vinaigrette dressing. So it's nice and light and fulfilling. And uh, it's something really to enjoy out on the patio with the old brood. Oh, mm -hmm. yes, because this is summertime and it's time to be out there and having some really good food. Now, what's in the ingredients? We have the salmon, but what's the ingredients here? Is that, is that no, potatoes? That's actually potatoes. John, you want to talk about how we prepare that? That's know. our, um, how do you do that? Shredded, shredded potato. It's a shredded potato. Yeah, we buy, uh, we peel our potatoes and we shred them in the machine. Really? And then we add some uh, green onion. Yummy. Uh, some whole egg yolks and some heavy cream, salt and pepper. Mm. Mm. And then it's refrigerated overnight. And then every day, we, we will probably do probably 20 a day. 20 a day. 20 pancakes a day, maybe 25. On St. Patrick's Day, we did probably 300. <gasps> 300? 300 beef bourguignons for the day. Mm. Yes. And so you can see the way it's, it's coming together on the bottom. Okay, but, but the preparation for this uh, takes, so it's not something that you do like right away, but you prepare how much in advance? We would prepare the pancakes in advance, and then they would, when the order would come in, then we would just heat the pancake in the oven oh. and heat the bourguignon. So if you were trying this at home, yeah, that's what right, I you, you actually could grate your potatoes the day before. You oh. want to put the ingredients together and let it hold to bind, because what you want is if you notice when he pulled it out of the dish, originally put it in, it was already kind of thickened yeah, and it was a little bit together. Right. And so, uh, but as you can see now, you're starting to see the grated, it the gradedness come out. Wonderful. And so in Ireland, you know, they have chicken boxty, they have pork boxty, you know, the potato boxty. is the staple of Ireland. So, yeah. you know, that's. And then uh, we also use it as an appetizer where we have a, a smaller portion of the potato pancake and we use it with uh, fresh smoked salmon on mm. top. Mm -hmm. So I'm putting together the blackened salmon salad. So we're using uh, baby field greens. Mm. We're using uh, some gorgonzola cheese. We like to use like four oh ounces my. of cheese. Two to four ounces of cheese on each salad. Yummy. We use some uh, dried cherries. Oh, on nice, top. Nice. Dried cherries. So get like a box of dried cherries. Uh, you could buy a uh, box dried cherries. Yeah, okay. absolutely. We got some um, I'm trying cherry to tomatoes. Get this, like in my head, and so I can do this again. Yeah, dried cherries like uh, dried sultanas or figs or mm. yeah, some mandarin oranges. Nice. And then we serve it with our ginger soy vinaigrette on the side. Ooh. And that's the black and salmon salad. It's ready. So, oh, that looks wonderful. Yeah. The trick to that. Yeah, How so, did you get it to, because my salmon never looks like that, ever. <laughs> well, it first helps having a, uh, a center cut filet. So, okay. I mean, Center cut. The, the, if you use the tail, it gets a little on the narrower side, a little thinner. Yeah. So you want to have a little thicker cut so that it doesn't fall apart in the pan. The other thing that's nice about the blackened and spice, you can also choose the blackened and spice, which works well for you mm -hmm. uh, as an individual. Some people like it spicier, some people like it mellower. But what we like about the blackened and spice is it actually pulls the oils from the salmon itself. And mm. actually it makes it a little drier. Sometimes people think, oh, salmon is so oily. But it really, when you blacken it, it, it mm. takes the oils away. So it really will almost, it'll fall apart when he places it on the salad. And as wow. you can see, he's already flipped the potato pancake there now. And uh, so, you know, it's already cooked three quarters through. He's just going to lightly brown it on the other side. Yeah. And then, John, you want to talk about the uh, beef bourguignon? The beef bourguignon is a uh, braised beef tenderloin tips. Mm. And what we do is we season them with fresh garlic, salt and pepper, mm -hmm. and we pan sear them in, the, in a pan. Okay. And then we take the beef out, and then we start off with, uh, we render bacon, applewood smoked bacon. Oh, my word. And when the bacon is rendered, then we add the mushrooms. And then we finish it with pearl onions and a reduction of burgundy red wine mm. and some demi glaze. Okay. And that's our beef bourguignon. And we serve it in the potato pancake. Uh, when oh I, you'll see it presented. Okay. Excellent. So. You know, so this is like such a treat because 
I don't think I would take on the beef. I think I could take on, I think I can do the salad and possibly the salmon. There you go. Oh, the the salmon actually, as you can see how easy it was today. It was so easy. Right, and it, it really is not that difficult. It's, it's something, you know, in the summertime here, it's salmon doesn't work as well on the grill because it is so flaky and it kind of it, oh, it'll come apart on you in the so grill unless beautiful. you have a flat, a flat grill uh, that you can actually put on there. You know, and I hope our viewers see this is be being prepared right here in the studio. Yes. No TV, TV tricks. This is truly happening, and this just happened here in the studio. I mean, that's so exciting. It really is. And then... You're going to serve it with the beef. Oh. Um, Bring us beef. I'm dying. <laughs> what a treat. What's the history of this type of, you know, dish? Mm. The, uh, the box, the, um, as you know in Ireland, that we, people say that we like a lot of potatoes and meat. Mm -hmm. um, and this was great. We would have leftover mashed potato that we would save it for the next day. And oh. this was the dish oh where we would my. take the potato, and turn this off, and we would pan sear it the next day and serve it like this with our beef. And you could put some little greens or little salad greens on the yes. side of this and, you know, or a vegetable. Or vegetable. Right, right. Mm -hmm. you know? so, so that's the beef bourguignon box, dude. I think that we need to try to do a little sampling <laughs> of this. So I want to try this. We had this wonderful presentation of food. Oh my goodness, we need to try this. Tell us what we have here, Mike. Well, again, these are some of our finest dishes at the Old Brogue. This is our uh, beef bourguignon box tea here, which we just made. This is also our blackened salmon salad. And then you've seen it on the prompter there, but this is actually our uh, homemade Irish whiskey cake mm. that we make in-house ourselves with the Bushmills Irish honey. And this is our Irish coffee, which also has the Bushmills Irish honey in it. And uh, it's nothing to, to finish a great meal than with dessert and an Irish coffee. Or if the Guinness is pouring, it's always great to have a Guinness. <laughs> with a Guinness. This is fantastic. I, I tell you, great food. And I think that I'll just take a, a smidgen. I'm just going to put some ice cream. Oh, Jemison's you know, cream. I just you love it. How did you know but that's close to my heart? Now that's so sad. That, oh. is the, that is the Jameson ice cream. As you can see, it's a little runny because it actually has real Jameson this liquor in the ice cream itself. Okay, all right. So we're glad that this is like the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to try this. All right. Mm, amazing. Oh my goodness. The ice cream is to die for. <laughs> wow. All right. And I want to try this. And which is absolutely, it looks heavenly. Um, you know, you put this together so quick, you know, wonderful. And I'm not going to fool myself and think that I can fix, fix this immediately. I'm going to. You know, for a nice summer night, a summertime evening meal, the blackened salmon salad is so easy for mm -hmm. everyone to do at home. Mm -hmm. You know, the beef box D takes a little bit more uh, a time, but it's well worth it. As it's can, heavenly. Yeah, as you can see, I mean, if, if you like potatoes, and obviously if you like beef I love tenderloin, potatoes. you know, you'll love our beef, our beef bourguignon box tea. Mm. But to the, the thing is, is once you have the blackened salmon salad, it will be on your favorites for a long yeah. time. Oh my goodness. Okay, so you're spoiling me. All right. We need to have you we here We love all you, Ingrid, time. too. When you, I love people who start on dessert first, and then they work their <laughs> way back to dinner. It's always, you know, we got we to gotta have our nice, our, our nice little Life sweet first. Life is too short. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And the thing is, and notice can, how I avoid the vegetables, huh? Yeah. Well, you, you can see by the salmon, too, when you prepare it, you, do, you don't mm. want to really overcook it. You don't want it to be too dry. Mm -hmm. and, it's beautiful. You know, Look at that. Yeah. The beef's so tender. It melts in your mouth. You didn't even need a f knife. It just cuts beautifully. All right. I'm so glad that I don't live near you. <laughs> because I would be too much. Um, delicious, delicious. Absolutely wonderful. And the beer that you Guinness have is that? always pouring. Your Irish coffee you'll always enjoy. 
and the Irish coffee. Mm -hmm. You can find out more information about the Old Brogue at oldbrogue.com. We're in Great Falls, Virginia. Mm -hmm. We're open seven days a week. We have a Sunday brunch. We have live entertainment three nights a week, and there's two outdoor patios to enjoy this time of year. And we're close to the Great Falls Park, so it's a really good weekend out. Well, thank you both for being here, and thanks thank you, for, Ingrid. Thanks for invite. We really enjoyed oh, it. Oh, thank this you. This was fun. Thank you, guests, for coming on the show. All of you have sprinkled a little spice to our life. It was marvelous having you all here. I'd like to leave you with the words from Marion Radmarsh Hershey. May your walls know joy. May every room hold laughter and every window open to great possibilities. Like us on Facebook for instant Ingrid's World News or see ingridsworld.org. Thanks for watching.